Relishing success in contrast to the government school participants. And now we are talking about the private school graduates or secondary school students who had completed, uh, who were now in the higher education. Now the private school participants had this huge sense of achievement. Even those who were not very good in English before when they were in school and realized this as a handicap, when they went to these public universities, they realized they were so much better than the government school students and they had this huge edge over this majority. And this gave them a strong sense of achievement. They felt fulfilled. They've also had this feeling of self-actualization. They could understand the text. They could pursue the studies. They could also participate in <clears throat> the extracurriculars, dramatics, anything they wanted to do. So there was a sense of liberation. And there was a sense of having a distinct position against those who were so disadvantaged because of not having access to English language in this context. So interestingly, the way they speak of this sense of self-actualization somehow did correlate with their, their own sense of English language proficiency. So those who had very good or higher English language proficiency as perceived by they themselves, because we did not check it, we only asked them how good they were in English, how well they perceived themselves. So those who perceived themselves with um, having very good English language skills had a um, higher sense of achievement, a higher sense of self-actualization and those who had lesser English language proficiency, they still felt now and realized now how privileged they were. Although there were a certain limitations to what they felt they could do. Now those with very good English language skills, they would talk about the times how they were just pushed into leadership positions and roles, how they were selected by different people. So somebody came, for instance, somebody came into the class and said, this is a company that is looking for an intern and we need someone with very good English language skills. And then the, the class uh, just took the name of this person and he was um, taken up or was selected by, every, by the company. So he did said he did not even have to say a thing. Only people just pointed out and chose him for this leadership position. And this is how others also talk about it. So they had this feeling, for instance, of something like, I can do anything, talk to anyone, walk up to somebody, bring in uh, um, uh, any argument, face it, negotiate and uh, ask for votes, they just felt this huge sense of liberation. Bourdieu says that language can be seen to uh, at the root of those selective processes at work in higher education. So higher education also does not provide equal opportunities. It also, it provides a selective process, uh, a certain kind of stratification is also going on in higher education and we can see how language works as a tool in this, this stratifying processes. These results also confirm the results of Walker 2006 who talks about how those whose linguistic and cultural backgrounds are devalued, they feel um, uh, ostracized, and they do not fit in very well in higher education. So if we are talking about equality, for instance, we can say, yes, there was equality. Same resources were available to everyone, same libraries, same teachers, same classrooms, same textbooks. But can we say that there was equality 
in higher education from capability approach perspective we will say no not because the freedom of choice to engage with, with those texts was differently distributed you can give everyone the same german book or same english book but the freedom of choice for those to engage with those textbooks will only be with those who understand the language and this is how capability approach allows us to understand that the starting point of all equality is to acknowledge that people are different and they have different types of cultural backgrounds different types of inhibitions and if you want to give equal opportunities you need to give them different types of resources that suit their potential so they can also achieve the same goal of higher education so higher education over here was also sort of geared to support only those who were already privileged